I don't think any Test Pilot School graduate could have dreamed of anything more awesome than being a part of a, the test flight of a brand new spaceship. SpaceX and NASA really have what is a monumental flight coming up. It's the first flight of American astronauts from American soil since the space shuttle flew its last mission in 2011. Two, one, zero, and liftoff, the final liftoff of Atlantis on the shoulders of the space shuttle. After the space shuttle retired, NASA's astronauts were still going to space. Only they were doing it on Russian rockets half a world away. The United States government, which beat the Soviet Union in the race to the moon, today does not have the ability to fly astronauts anywhere. I think a lot of people did believe that NASA had closed its doors and it kind of almost ended its human spaceflight program. Our vision was to transition and have commercial operations here at KSC. The government subsidized early aviation and helped develop a commercial market. What we are doing is very similar. When we went to the moon in 1969, we were driven by a Cold War space race with the Soviet Union. Yes, indeed, they've got the flag up now. But now what you see is a sort of a growing space race among American corporations to go farther and faster. In 2014, NASA awarded contracts to Boeing and SpaceX to build and design spacecraft that would be capable of flying astronauts. The companies are very different. Boeing has been around for many, many years. SpaceX has been around for a little more than a decade. I jokingly say, uh, you know, that it's the ties and the flip-flops. Uh, you know, it's two different mindsets, you know, old aerospace, new aerospace. Increase half force. Early on, a lot of people thought that Boeing, they're the big favorite. They're the big aerospace company that has been a partner with NASA since the dawn of the space age. But because Boeing has stumbled so badly, SpaceX has clearly taken the lead, and they are going to be the first company to attempt to fly astronauts from U.S. soil. There's a lot of negativity these days, and it would be great to have something positive that perhaps can uh, unite the country or the world, and advancement in space is one of those things. And if you think about the Apollo in moon landing, and you know that was even though it was only a, a few people that did it vicariously, we all went there. We all went to the moon. It's hugely significant to bring that launch capability back to the United States. I don't see any way that launching again in Florida would not reinvigorate people's interest in the space program. Astronauts are once again going to be in the spotlight. He talked about his uh, four daughters. I also have to mention I've got a uh, beautiful wife, Julie, and uh, two sons. They're going to be carrying the hopes and dreams for the country. And what many hope is sort of a new era in human spaceflight. These astronauts are really the best of the best. I mean, they clearly have uh, all the right stuff. That said, when you go to space, it's a whole new ball game. A rocket launch is essentially like a bomb going off, but you're controlling the direction of the blast. So how do you put that energy in safely uh, and, and get people to orbit, uh, you know, where you're going 25 times the speed of sound, you're, you're circling the Earth every 90 minutes. It's just like a speed that's difficult for people to even comprehend. So there's still a lot of training they need to accomplish. These astronauts have been training extensively on these brand new vehicles. You see, we copy and we see that and we will assume if we lose you in the handover that we are no go to unbox. 35 minutes on this timer, I think is the last. 30, 33, 27 on this timer. They ring out all of the kinks, all of the things that go wrong. And so they've been spending a lot of time in the simulators, working out all kinds of scenarios. Okay, TC, I was more concerned about the essential buses effect on the RHC. We've done everything we can to make sure that the rocket is safe and the spacecraft is safe. You can't help but being a little bit nervous. And part of that nervousness is like, okay, I just gotta get everything done and I can't make a mistake. The NBL is the Neutral Buoyancy Lab. 
that's got almost a full-size mock-up of the International Space Station under the water. The reason why the astronauts train in the pool is that's one of the best ways they can get to simulate a weightless environment. One of the things that the astronauts train on is when they are on the pad preparing to get into the spacecraft, if there was a fuel leak of the rocket and they needed to get off the crew tower as quickly as possible, they hop in these baskets and shoot down to the ground really, really fast. As you're going down the line, I'd like for you to just kind of get a feel for the brake system. NASA actually has these up-armored military vehicles that they hop into that would keep them safe in case anything went wrong. If we take a bird, and if it comes through the canopy, uh, and I can't talk to you for whatever reason, yep. I'm gonna actively fly the jet. Otherwise, I'm gonna let you know how I'm doing up there. The T-38 jet is a vehicle that NASA's astronauts have been training on for decades. The astronauts need to have their piloting skills up in case they need to take control of the spacecraft. In the T-38, they can experience up to 7G. That's seven times the force of gravity. And when they're in space, they may have to uh, ha carry a heavy G-load, and this helps acclimate them for that. By the time we're actually sitting on top of the rocket, we've gone through it one time after another, and so you sort of know all the cadence of exactly what's going to happen, and you're ready for all of that. You've just got to understand that there are a lot of things you have control over, but you've also got to trust the team to take care of the things that you don't have control over. This is the most creative spacesuit I have ever seen. <laughs> Rockets and spacecraft, the engineering is spectacular, but it's right on the edge. There's so much that has to go right. You know, you come home. That's the best outcome. Everything else is worse. The most amazing thing about being in space, honestly, is looking back at our planet. It puts everything into perspective. All the silly stuff that you worry about, like traffic and waiting in line for coffee, who cares? It just changes you. You know, you see how thin the atmosphere is. You see no borders. You just see this beautiful blue ball and these beautiful parts of the ocean and beautiful mountain ranges. I've always said I wished everybody on this planet would have an opportunity to take a lap around the Earth, just one time at least. I think we would be a lot nicer to each other. Our destiny is not to be stuck here on Earth. Our destiny is to explore and go beyond, continue to learn and expand. Very important to keep that, that hope alive. <laughs>